In this video, we're going to teach you how to add Modbus to your Point.io system. I'll explain what the ILX34 products are, as well as instructions on how to configure them. If you have a distributed Point.io system or a Compact Logix L1 system and you need to communicate to one or several Modbus devices, you now have a cost effective integrated solution available to you. The ILX34 has one port and comes in two different versions an RS232 version and an RS-485 version. Both of these products can be configured as a master or as a slave. The only software you need to configure these modules is the RS Logix or Studio 5000 program that you already have and we will provide an add-on instruction or AOI that will drop right into your new or existing project. Along with configuration your AOI brings in diagnostic tags which can monitor node health. These modules should be able to handle the vast majority of your applications because it has up to 30 commands and up to 36 words per command. Now let's check out how this module is configured. We will be going over installing, configuring, and troubleshooting the ILX34 MBS. In this example we will be using a Compact Logix L1 controller with the module configured as a master reading and writing to a generic Modbus slave. If you were using a distributed Point.io system, the following would be the same, except you would add this module to a remote Point.io rack inside your Control Logix or Compact Logix program. First, we will install the ILX34 MBS inside the L1 chassis and power up the processor. Now, let's start RS Logix 5000 and select New Project. Again, if you're using Studio 5000, this will work as well. When prompted to select your processor, do so. I will be using a 1769 L16ER using version 20. Choose the appropriate amount of expanded I.O. you have. I am using just one. Now select OK. When the project opens, right click on the expanded I.O. and choose New Module. Clear the Module Type category and select Other. Select the generic 1734 module and choose Create. Once in the module configuration window, give your module a name. I will name mine ILX34 underscore MBS. Leave the COM format as Data, Sint, and choose your appropriate slot. I will be using slot 2 for my project. For your convenience, we offer three add-on instructions, giving you the option of three backplane sizes, 8, 24, and 36 words. For this example, I'm using the 36 word version. Now we will enter the connection parameters. The input is 107 with a size of 90, the output 108 and a size of 82, and lastly the configuration 103 with a size of 38. Click OK to accept the changes. The next window that pops up is the RPI. This is the rate at which the processor pulls the module for data. We recommend between 50 and 75 milliseconds. Then click OK. Next, expand the routine you would like to add the AOI to or add on instruction. It does not matter which routine you add it to as long as that routine is being called. I will add my AOI to the main routine. Right click on the first available rung and choose Import Rungs. Now browse to where your AOI is placed on your PC. The AOI I am using is located conveniently on my desktop. Highlight the AOI, then click the Import button. The AOI can be found on the product page on our website. The window that opens up is the configuration for importing the AOI. Click on the Tags option to ensure that your AOI is pointing at your correct slot in your processor. My module is in slot 2, so I make sure it is pointing at the local slot 2. Click OK and the import process will begin. When the import finishes, delete any open rungs to prevent any errors. Now to configure the module, we will need to go into the controller tags. Double click on the controller tags. In the controller tags, expand MBS underscore config. For your convenience, all of the valid values are under the descriptions tab. First option is type. This is where we define the module as a master or a slave. I will be setting mine up as a master, so I will choose the option 0. If you are setting your module up as a slave, enter a value of 1 in the type 
and choose a valid node or slave address for the second option, slave ID. Next is baud rate. The baud rate I'm going to be using is 19200, so I will choose option 0. The parity, data bits, and stop bits are all lumped into one word. I am looking for the option 8 data bits, no parity, and 1 stop bit, so I will enter a value of 3 here. Next is the protocol. This is where we define whether we are communicating Modbus RTU or Modbus ASCII. I will be using Modbus RTU, so I will enter in a value of 1. The last tag may be of some value to you is the timeout. I will not need to change this as I will be communicating a short distance. The rest of the settings are advanced slave configuration parameters that are not typically used. Consult your user manual for more information. Because we are a master, we have to configure commands to initiate communication on the Modbus network. Expand MBS, then expand master command. Here you have up to 30 commands to configure. Expand master command 0. All of these options are here to configure a single command. Let's say you need to send a Modbus slave device a single integer value of 76 to address 40,039. To do this, I need to create the following command. First, the enable will turn on and off the command. I want this command to run continuously, so I will enter a 1 here. Node, this is the slave ID of the Modbus slave, and the slave ID is 3. Next, we will be writing to a 4x register, which means we need to use a function code 16. The device address is the address in the device that this command will interact with. When you enter a 4x function code, our module adds 40,001 to this number. So we need to subtract 40,001 from 40,039 to get the device address. The count is how many words we are going to write. I only need to write one word, so I'll enter a value of 1. The internal address is where the data associated with this command originates from. We will choose address 0. Address 0 is going to be the first word of the output word array. The next option is poll interval. 0 means the command will initiate as fast as it can. Swap is a way of correcting byte or word swapping issues. 0 will turn this option off. Trigger is for manually initiating the command. We are not going to use this feature in this demo. Now the command 0 is complete, collapse master command 0, and now we will edit the second command. Let's say you need to read a dint in the 3x or 30,000 range. Here we will read a register from the same node at internal address 30,016. The enable will be turned on with a 1. Node is going to be the same as the first command, node 3. The function code is going to be 4 because we need to read a 3x register. The register we are going to be reading is 30,016. So we need to subtract 30,001, which leaves us an address of 15. And we will enter that 15 in the device address. Count will be two words. The internal address will be 0. The data will show up in the first word in the input word register array. We do not need to change the poll interval, the swap, or the trigger. Now we can collapse that command. Now we have added the module and configured the module, we can now download to the processor. Click on Communications. Next click Who Active. Expand the Ethernet IP driver and choose the processor. Your path may differ. Select the processor, then choose Download. After we download, we should be communicating to the Modbus slave. We can view the Modbus data by expanding the MBS data array. Here we see the input bit and register array and the output bit and register array. The first command we built was a write command to the address 40039. So let's expand the output data register and enter in a 76 in output data 0. Let's collapse our output array. 
expand the input data register to view input data 0. Here we have a 4 for the first register and a 0 for the second register, signaling that we're reading data from the Modbus slave. It looks like everything is working just fine, but what if it's not? The ILX34 MBS is equipped with several diagnostic tags that automatically import with the add-on instruction. Let's explore some of those tags now. First let's see if we are having any general communication errors. Under the MBS array, expand MBS status. Here you can see general Modbus communication. Total number of transmitted messages, number of received messages, and the number of errors or failed messages. For more detailed error status, expand the last option. This is the command error array. Here you can see each of the commands and their communication state. If I unplug my communications cable, we see that the tag MBS status dot command error 0 and 1 change. This is the status of the commands we configured earlier. Now with my cable unplugged, we see a value of 22. If we mouse over the descriptions tab, you will see that a value of 22 implies that we have a Modbus timeout. Once I plug my communications cable back in, you see that both commands that had 22s will return to zeros, letting me know that both my commands are again successful. If you wanted to, you could have Logic monitor these tags and alert you if there are any issues on your network. This concludes the ILX34 MBS training video. For an in-depth Modbus protocol video or any of our other training videos, please visit us at our website www.prosoft-technology.com And as always, happy training!